approval process. So what actually approval process is? Approval process is like an extension to workflow rule. Okay, it's just like an extension to workflow rule. It it starts as a workflow rule. Okay, but in the end, it's it's working is very different and very its requirement is also very different. Like when do you actually need it? It is different. Okay, so let me just show you here. So in a workflow rule, okay, you tell me. Okay, so in workflow rule, what are the steps? Like to create a workflow rule. Like uh, yeah, correct. Correct. How do you start? Okay. 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 So entry criteria you choose. Okay. After that. Mm hmm. Okay. Correct, correct. So, okay, that means action. Okay, action. So, one is the entry criteria and one is the action. Okay, and before we start, we have one object. Okay, you have to choose on which object the workflow rule that you are creating has to work. Okay, okay. Then you choose which is the uh, like should it work when you new create a new record or should you should it work when you update the record okay depending on that it will work okay so whenever the entry criteria is fulfilled when the condition becomes true okay when the condition becomes true that time the action will happen okay whatever action you choose if you choose to send an email create a record update a record whatever it is okay so as soon as the entry criteria is fulfilled the action will take place okay that is the workflow rule now in an approval process okay first similarly you choose one object on which object should the uh, approval process work okay then you choose one entry criteria Okay, one entry criteria choose you make a formula when this field is updated to this, 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 or when the percentage is this much, or when the amount is this much, whatever you choose, you choose the entry criteria. Okay, after the entry criteria is chosen, okay, then you have to choose one action. Okay, you have to choose one action, but the action will not happen when the entry criteria is fulfilled. Okay, when the entry criteria becomes true, that time the action will not happen. After the entry criteria is full, uh, fulfilled, then you have to send it for approval. Okay. You have to send it for approval. You have to send it for approval to either your manager or employee or anybody, whoever uh, whoever's approval is required. Okay. So let's say you want to apply for a paid time leave or paid time off, PTO. Okay. You want to apply for a PTO and that is more than three days. So in generally, if it's more than three days, it needs the manager's approval. Okay, something like that. I mean, it depends on company to company. So if it's like more than three days, then you need an approval from the manager to give the PTO. Okay, so in that case, what will happen? So entry criteria will become what if the leave is more than three days? Okay, that will become the entry criteria. So after the entry criteria is fulfilled, then the HR will go ahead and they'll submit for the approval and they'll submit for the approval to whoever is required, either your manager or their senior or whichever hierarchy they have to go. Okay, so once they send for approval, then still the action will not take place. So the action will take place depending on the result of the approval. Okay, so the approval, the approval may be, <clears throat> it may be approved. Okay, it could be approved. It could be rejected. Okay, or it could be either even recalled by the HR. HR will recall the approval. It does not want to send it to the approval. He wants to make some changes and then wants to send. So let's say he recall. So in that there is a separate action. Okay, so there are separate, depending on the result of the approval, if it's approved, if it's rejected, if it's uh, still like uh, pending. Okay. So depending on the status or the result of the approval, okay certain actions you have to take okay so this 
action whatever action that you want to choose this action can be separately chosen for either approved for rejected for recall for pending so let's say if it's approved then you want to add one comment or you want to send an email or the hr wants to send an email to you that your leave has been approved okay so that is when the uh, approval is approved okay if the manager rejects it okay if the manager says that no i mean uh, right now it's like the peak time or maybe quarter end you can't go right now we need the resource blah 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 they'll say in that case if they uh, if the hr wants to send another uh, email to you saying that it has been re rejected and they want to change the status of your uh, pto from approve uh, from pending to rejected they want to do these two actions so when it's rejected it's a separate action okay and when they recall in recall they can go ahead and change it and do whatever changes and they can either sub, uh, submit for approval once again or they can leave it no problem so that is what approval process is okay it depends on the status of the approval if it's approved if it's rejected depending on the status the different different actions are taken okay so from here the entry criteria is same action will be also same but action can be different for approved rejected <coughs> okay so the actions can be different okay so that's the difference between the workflow and the approval process so these kind of questions you might get in the interview like what is the difference between workflow and process builder why you use workflow why not for process builder why in which situation you will use process builder and not workflow okay when to go for approval process all those things these kind of questions will come okay so you have to understand like in which situation you have to use which functionality okay okay so let's take few examples for approval process okay so when in which other scenario can approval process come into place uh, let's say there is a deal going on between two companies between the enterprise and between uh, some other company which has some requirement okay and they want certain number of products okay but they they will purchase more number of products only if the discount percentage is uh, let's say more than 20% okay so if it's even like maybe let's say 100000 dollars deal then 20% of that will be how much some 2000 or uh, 2000 or 20000 100000 so 20% will be divide, remove one this and make it two so it will be 20000 correct na so so 20% is 20000 so 20000 discount if some uh, sales representatives give then it will be going out from the company's money right so so much of revenue he cannot take action on that he does not have authority so each company will have different different uh, rules set like this much of percentage you can allow and this much up, up beyond that it sh it should need an approval okay so depending on the code so they will send se several codes to the user okay line items will be changed how many number of products that will change what is the discount percentage what is the actual price all those things they will put in quotes and they will send different different quotes and if that is uh, sent to the uh, the user it will also be sent to the manager for approval so whichever quote is approved by the manager that quote will be the final quote okay so depending on the approval of that uh, discount percentage the ne next action will happen if it gets rejected then they will have to either revise the quote okay if it gets approved then they will go ahead and close one the opportunity or any action they want to take they can go ahead and take it okay and once the entry criteria is fulfilled then the person has to or whoever is the owner of that particular record they have to submit it for approval okay okay so that is what is an approval what an approval pro process is okay so as of now i have already created uh, two approval processes okay but we'll go ahead and we will deactivate this okay it's already deactivated we'll create new approval processes okay so similarly you just go to approval process okay you're already under but we'll go to upper approval process okay and we'll create new approval process 
first you have to choose for which object you want to manage okay let's say Mm, do we have any object for PTO? Okay, we'll qu quickly create one object for leaves. Okay. Okay, so here we want one object. So we'll create one object. That object will be label is PTO. Okay. Or we'll choose leaf. Okay. Object name leaf. Description is okay, 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 okay. PTO name. It should be text only, or we'll put auto number. Okay, we'll put auto number only. And display will be like PTO hyphen. We'll start from 0000. zero, zero, zero. And the starting number is let's say one. Okay, we'll quickly create one tab as well, and we will save. Mm, I did not tell you about auto number, is it? Mm, okay. Okay, as of now, just understand that auto number is like a num number sequence. Okay, it will, it will, whenever you create a new field or a new record, okay, that number will automatically increment. Okay, so for, for, for the first record, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes 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 exactly so if you create a new record then it will be 0, 0, 0, 0002 depending on the sequence that you give okay so it will happen like that okay now i'll we'll quickly choose one tab here whatever tab it's fine no problem we'll put on the next Okay, as of now, we'll click next. Okay, include the tab everywhere. Save. Okay, okay, so now we need one field for status. Okay, so we'll create one new field okay, for the status, and that field we'll choose as one pick list. Okay, it will be approved, rejected, pending, we'll choose. Okay, so where is the pick list? P -p -p -p. Okay, pick list. So it will be the status. Okay, use the global. No, we want our own. So one will be approved, one will be rejected. Okay, one will be pending. Okay, uh, approved, rejected, pending. Maybe re Record. Okay, display alphabetically. No, first no. Okay, that is fine. By default, we'll choose as pending. That is okay. Field name status. That is okay. Required. Uh, required. Mm, no, not required. And we click next. Okay, we should make it visible. Click next. On uh, the page layout, our leave layout, same object layout, no problem. You click save. Okay, so one <laughs> field we have for the status. Okay, and one we will add for one description. One text we will add quickly. One text or maybe text area we will add 255 characters. Okay. This will be description. Like that, you can have as many fields as you want. You can add one subject also, just like a normal PTO. Okay, but for demonstration purpose, I'm just uh, creating this much. And visible next. 
and we'll click save okay so let's take a look what it looks like so if we create a new okay one will be auto number that auto number you cannot edit it it's a read only field okay because it's generated by the system okay so if you edit that auto number if you edit that then the sequence will get uh, disturbed right so if you so that is why it's only a read only read only field okay by default okay so as of now so uh, maybe diwali leave we'll create one diwali leave okay and we'll click save okay so one record is created one pto they have created but here there's no approval process attached yet okay there's no approval process created for this particular leave okay see if you view approvals as of now we will not have any of the approval process created okay so the object that we are into right now is the approval processes for the leave okay so what we will do is we will create one new approval process okay so we will use the jumpstart wizard it's quick if you go to standard then we'll get very confused okay so we'll use jumpstart wizard so the first step is the entry criteria okay who should be the uh, what should be the entry criteria when should it uh, start the approval process okay so what we will choose one leave leave approval unique name is this one so we have to give one email template like what email should be sent as of now we'll just choose any template approve opportunity discount how it remind renewal sales new customer support support case 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 uh, we'll choose some something okay as of now we'll choose one random okay now should it be for a formula or should it be for a criteria is met okay so oh number of days we have not mentioned right okay so we'll create another custom field for the number of days and we'll put that as a entry criteria if the number of days is more than three then we will go ahead and we'll submit the for approval so we'll put one number field here okay number field here and we'll click next number of days okay uh, length is 18 no problem decimal is not required uh, length will put it as we can put a limit also we can put it as only two because only two is enough nobody will take more than 99 days oh like that will <laughs> okay uh, correctly. Uh, in that situation we can do that no problem so we will put here two okay so if you put here it initially it was 18 only right and now if you put decimal place two then it will not accept because the total length should be 18 including the decimal okay so that's why we have to decrease this first and whatever decimal amount we want to increase if we move, make it three three decimal places we want then we'll have to make it as 15. okay like that so we'll keep it 16 only and we'll keep it two okay number of days okay uh, help text we'll do okay enter the number of days for leave always require the value okay because number of days without the number of days how can a leave exist like it has to be half day one day whatever it is but it is a required field okay and you can make it also not duplicate but it can be duplicate also maybe if you are taking two days leave i can also take two days leave so that can be duplicate so we we cannot choose this one okay external id as of now will not do that and default value will not uh, and we click next visible next then same page layout no problem and we choose save 
now we will have to refresh this to get that particular uh, so our PTO is there number of days is a required field so we will put let's say Diwali leave as six days okay now we will save it so 6.00 for six full days okay so leave only leave approval that is fine add the submit for approval okay button for the approval history okay so in the related list in the list of re uh, related list it will show you the approval history also okay whether it is approved whether it is rejected pending whatever status is it will show there and also submit for approval button will also be there okay so that you can send it for approval okay see these items are added regardless of whether the approval process is active or not okay okay and the unique name we have given as leave approval okay that is fine now the entry criteria criteria are met so what we'll choose here we'll choose number of days okay leave number of days operator greater than if it's greater than three okay if it is greater than three then we have to go for the leave it depends on your requirement if the company says that if it's like more than two you can go ahead and do that if it's three or more than three then it depends on the requirement so you can also choose greater or equal to okay maybe some company will say that if it's three leave then it's fine if it's more than three then it depends on the requirement so here if you want we can choose greater or equal to as well okay if we choose greater then it will work only if it is 3.001 or maybe 3.01 after that it will work because we have given two decimal places right okay so any value above three will work okay so here we can choose greater than or equal to three even 3.5 days okay 3.5 days or even three will work if the days is three three will also work yeah okay so it will require the approval and now we have to select the approver okay here one step also we have to add object entry criteria and here we have to select the approver so who has to approve okay okay now let's take a look at the approver so using the options below specify the user to whom the approval request should be submitted so if you submit for approval then that approval should go to which person okay so you can do this let the submitter choose the approval manually so whenever he wants to submit for approval it he will give an, get an option to choose the approver whom do you want to submit it to so in that time he can enter manually yes yes it, because it's a user right at the end of the day it will be sent to user only some user will be there so user is a lookup okay correct so if you want to assign it automatically depending on the role so let's say you your organization has a role hierarchy manager is there then uh, maybe uh, lead is there and then maybe team spock is there so if the hierarchy is set like that so depending on the hierarchy also you can go ahead and you can do that but as of now we don't have hierarchy set okay so i just created one hierarchy as a manager okay but that manager has to have some user right so that is not mentioned okay so i'll show you the hierarchy once so there is something called roles okay role is nothing but hierarchy okay so it is like this hierarchy okay so as of now this is a sample so depending on the product based depending on the company size sample if you want you can create new setup roles also okay so roles is already set here okay this will be your company it will be automatically coming here and one ceo will by default come okay if you want you can add more roles here okay you can add more role under the ceo or you can delete this and you can create your own role if your company does not have a ceo they have some other thing maybe manager or md is there some companies will not have ceo they'll have md okay. 
so you can edit the existing one from CEO to something else and once the hierarchy is set okay then you have to assign it to some user okay like who is the CEO who is the CFO who is the MD all that you have to assign because without assigning any user the structure is there but if there's no user then it's of no meaning okay yeah so depending on this role structure also you can you can assign the leave or uh, you can submit it for the approval okay so that is what it's asking so you can go ahead and assign the approver using a standard or a custom hierarchy field so whatever is already available that's a standard one and if you are creating anything then that will be standard so as the standard manager is there okay but custom is not so if you want you can create a new hierarchical relationship field also okay so or else there's something called queue queue is like a line okay if you want to assign it you can create queues also in salesforce you have an option to create queue also queue group all those things are there okay so if you create a new queue let's let's try this okay you can put the queue name and you can put available objects it's just like that okay you can create a queue for users okay okay who are the queue members okay so let's say let's say we put some five members for that queue okay let's say we have five members for that queue in that case if you select the approval process and you submit it to that queue from that queue anybody can pick up okay so it's like it's like uh, Mm, it's like ticketing system have you ever worked with service now or any uh, ticketing system where you get tickets mm -hmm. ah just like that hmm ha ah, like that so yeah so that is that is the example of queue here also same thing so under that queue you can assign as many members as you want if somebody wants to assign them the individually they can do that or somebody can pick it up also also like pick it up on their own from the queue hmm. yeah so queue is mostly like organized like first person whoever is the first one in they will be assigned first then the second one will be assigned second so it is like that okay so in salesforce we have groups also queue is also there and group is also there in a group there is no sequence okay so one group is also there so you can assign to groups as well okay but this sub approval process you cannot assign to a group you can assign it to a queue okay you can automatically assign to the queue as of now i don't think we will have any queue here hmm yeah yeah whoever is in the first uh, in the queue queue is what queue is like a stack queue is like a stack no no stack is different queue is different uh, queue is like first in first out okay it's a fifo first in first out whoever goes first in the queue let's say atm has a queue whoever goes in first they will be served first okay stack is different stack is like last in first out yeah it's a leaf so whoever is at the top of the stack like whichever book is at the top of the stack that book will be picked up first okay so that is different here queue is like first in first out whoever is in the first in the queue that person will be assigned this approval okay and you can assign it to multiple uh, users as well you can assign it to let's say one big deal is being cracked and in that whole region there are lots of managers okay in different different departments and everybody's approval is required okay in that case you can assign it to multiple users as well okay so as of now we'll choose as let the submitter choose the approval manually so the hr who is uh, creating the pto okay she will choose the approval or he will choose the approval manually okay okay now we'll click save this is just the entry criteria this is one step okay so we'll choose save you will not be able to use this approval process until it is activated so just like a, a workflow rule here also we'll have to activate the approval process okay so let's move forward 
okay you have just created one step approval process for leaves using the jumpstart wizard although not required is recommended that you perform additional actions before activating your process to make it functional okay that approval somebody can choose but you have to choose the action like uh, you can also choose it or you can also leave it okay if you want some actions to happen after approved after rejected then you can choose those actions but if you just leave it as it is then that approval process will show in the hierarchy at the at the bottom okay and it will show that it is approved but it will not do anything it will show that it's approved if it's approved but if if you have not taken any action after it's approved then the action will not happen okay so now in that case see there are few steps here okay so first step is what create an additional step if the record requires more than one level of approval so if you want it to go to a hierarchy more uh, higher level okay you can go ahead and do the additional steps okay then we'll see that it's better you will see that so final approval one step is there and final rejection one step is there let's say if it's going to several hierarchies like step one is going to somebody step two is going to higher person step three is going to higher person and finally if it's approved or rejected depending on that if you want to take some action we have to give one here okay and recall workflow also we can take so let's say if the approval is recalled in that case what you want to do okay so like that so let's go ahead and let's view the approval process detail is it getting confusing yeah it's getting hmm hmm yeah so approval process is already created if we activate that it will be activated okay the, even the hr will be able to submit it the, she can submit it and it will go to the approver also whoever she chooses in manually it has to go to this particular user it will go and he can approve it and reject it but it will only show in the hierarchy or the it will only show in the related list here at the bottom you will get a related list for approval history and it will show that whether this record is approved or rejected it will show that okay but it will not do anything so it is not so functional as of now okay so in order depending on the uh, result of the approval process if you want to take some action that is when we have to do that okay okay so let's move forward <clears throat> so as of now this is our approval okay and number of days is greater than or equal to 3 okay then they will be submitting for the approval okay and it is not active yet recall the approval request okay we can also go ahead and recall submit approval page layout notification template for field and record editability okay next automated approval determined by no not this one Ad administrators only can edit the records during the approval process administrators or the currently assigned approver can edit the record during the approval process okay we'll choose this click next okay approval assignment template template we have already chosen no problem we will click next approval page is where an approval will actually approve or reject the request so these are the fields which will show so let's take a look at the example here see this is what it will look like the approval history will have one pending one uh, approved if it's approved then it will it will show that it is approved okay but if somebody is still yet to approve yet to approve it either approve or reject then it will be pending okay and what kind of interface he'll get the person who has to approve he'll get inter interface like this okay so if you see here okay one report name is there owner this is an owner of that particular report and the submitted amount is 5000 something okay submitted for approval okay so here he will put his comments he can approve it or reject it okay so like this so as of now we want only these two fields okay and who is the owner and what is the pto name it will appear here okay 
so like these fields are there na assign to actual approval all those things status comments so depending on this field that we choose there so this will be showing there okay now what are other functions here there display approval history information in addition to the field selected above yes we want to show the approval history so we'll let it be chosen okay and then security allow the approvers to access the approval page only when only from within the salesforce application okay this is the recommended way they can also go ahead and do that using emails so allow the approver to access the approval page from within salesforce application or externally from wireless enabled mobile devices let's say he is getting an email he can also approve and reject from there his phone also okay so as of now we'll keep it simple and we'll click next okay initial submitters so we'll choose as it is leave the that is fine allow the submitters to recall even submitter can allow uh, recall the approval request so that is fine okay and let's save okay so this is just our approval process is determined now we have to choose the actions okay you can choose it step by step also but we will choose only final approval and final rejection and final recall okay as of now in the initial submission when you submit that particular uh, approval okay the record will be locked this is by default okay so that because let's say some discount is 20% and that discount is submitted to one approval uh, one approver one manager is submitted okay meanwhile if somebody is editing that and changing that then that approval process is like it's it's disturbed right so in the record it's showing 15% and in the approval it's showing 20% right so in that case because to prevent that kind of discrepancy the record will be locked okay so during the approval process you and the other person outsiders will not be able to edit that record okay so yeah so we have uh, we have mentioned as only the submitter who is submitting the approval they can only edit the or recall the approval okay okay so that is the approval step okay so step 1 assign approval that's fine final rejection okay now in the final approval actions the law uh, if the approval is sent then the record will be locked if the recall okay and when the uh, approval is recalled then the record will be unlocked okay and if the record is rejected also like if the approval is rejected also then also it will be unlocked you can edit it no problem okay so when the approval is going through then the record will be locked okay so we'll add some actions here what will happen if final approval is done okay so we'll add some action so this is for add, adding existing so if you have some existing actions you can add that okay so instead of that we'll use add new so what kind of action you want either we want to send email alert or update one field or outbound message also you can do okay just like the action of workflow rules here also you can choose one action okay so one we will send an email alert and one we will send an update as well okay uh remind approval yes yes so if the approval so the here what we are choosing is we are choosing action to take place when the approval is approved okay so when it is approved then what you want to happen so when it's approved we want to send an email to whoever the person is there who is having that pto who is applying for that pto he should be reminded that yes your approve uh, your uh, leave has been approved you getting the point okay if you have any confusion just uh, we'll stop right there okay because moving forward it will become yeah
no 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 this is only for approval like if it's approved okay so if it, this is for success if the approval is approved in that case what you want to do okay for rejection we have different action for recall we have different action so as of now we are under the section which is for approved okay we'll choose one email template just like other sending emails here also we'll choose one email template if you want you can create a new a new uh, email template to approve the leave okay or as of now we'll choose the same approve the opportunity okay and we have to choose the recipient who should be receiving that so this should be the our related user role role or submitted public groups owner we'll have to create another field we should create another field which is to uh, connect who who is applying for the leave as of now let's say i am the hr i am creating this pto right but who is the actual uh, one person who is applying for this leave so that field we should create one here okay and that lookup that we wanted to uh, update here that who should uh, so if i am applying for the leave and i am updated in this field then i am the one who should be getting the uh, email right that yes your approval has been your leave has been approved okay so like that so let's quickly create one new field and we'll create one lookup quickly we'll create one lookup and this is related to one user user and next okay field name field name is no 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 field label mm, mm, leave for so this person is applying the leave or leave uh, leave for is fine okay who is yeah Ah, oh, we can i think that is better employee you can put one employee here okay who or we'll put one help text it will display who is applying for leave okay child relationship name relationship name is the one which is this uh, which if you want to get this relationship uh, or you get the uh, the record from the api using sockwell like using code then this relationship name will be used as of now we will just put as employee only here also see the child relationship name is an internal reference okay that means it's an api name and is used for integration purpose be careful when changing the child field relationship uh, as it may affect the existing integrations okay that is fine so we'll choose next visible next okay safe okay this we will refresh okay recipient should be the user okay you can choose here or we don't want it like that one second related user so employee okay so whoever the employee whichever uh, employee is populated there okay that employee will be send an email and we should also make it a, a required field okay because somebody has to apply for a leave right i mean it cannot have a blank name right so we'll make that later no problem okay and this particular person's email address will be chosen here if you want to send an additional email you can add your email address just to cc like who else you want to cc okay i'll put my okay 
لا ويل تشوز سيف اوكي سو وير از اور ابروفل بروسس your approvals okay so this record lag and everything is fine but as of now we are under the approval process if it's approved then what we have to do so if it's approved then we have to remind the approval we have to send the email okay we mail to the person who is mentioned here we'll refresh this page okay who is the owner of that particular approval like who is the employee for which the approval is done as you see here as the approval process is uh, just created now approval history is here okay so we have to take care of the rest of the things okay so one email alert is then and then for rejection also we have to add something okay we have to add one email alert here we'll add one field also okay field update also we'll do and we'll change the status of that particular approval pto okay uh, status change and which field to update the object is leave obviously you have to change the field which field you want to change it standard is this you don't want to change the owner you want to change the field this uh, number of days status so you want to change the status okay and the field type is pick list so we have to choose the value from the pick list so if it's approved then we'll choose it as approved okay and we'll choose save we can also make it a read only field we should actually make it a read only field because why because let's say the hr can also go ahead and change that field right as of now status so this should be a read only field so that it can be changed only by the approval process and not manually okay you're getting the point so this is why it should be a read only field okay okay so let's move forward so till now it's fine right like everything is clear right okay okay just let me know when you have any disconnect okay 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 all right so the our uh, approval step is done hmm. okay so as of now if the uh, record is approved we don't want to log the record if it's approved then this is fine if you want to if it's approved if you want to keep it uh, as it is if you don't want anybody else to change it once it's approved then you can keep it as logged okay so only a few people like system admin and who has approved and who has submitted they they can only change the record the user cannot go ahead and change the record after it is approved okay so they cannot go ahead and change the number of days if they change the number of days after approval then what's the meaning they can increase it to 10 like that so you should not be let, uh, you should not let them change the record okay now after the rejection okay after rejection if it is rejected then they want to decrease the number of days if the number of days 6 is not approved they want to decrease the number of days to maybe 4 or 3 so it should allow you to unlock the record if it is rejected okay so that they can revise the number of days or revise the criteria so that is why it's unlocked okay so one second okay so now what we'll do is we'll take some actions when the uh, the process is rejected when the record is rejected for approval okay so we will choose some new action we can first we can choose one field and we will change the status to rejected mm i can choose it as rejected and the leave is rejected now Hmm. Field to update. Which field should be update? We should update the status. Okay. And it is from pick list. Field change. Hmm.
then it should be rejected and we'll create save and we'll create another action that action will be for email saying that it has been uh, rejected please revise number of days okay rejected email okay and the field to update mm -mm. it's not the field okay one second so we want to not do the field update we want to send a reminder email so rejected email so email template will choose some template so we can create another template for rejection okay as of now we will just choose any template okay and who should be the recipient so instead of the user we can choose the the related user just the way that we chose last time okay and here also the employee should uh, get the email if it's rejected okay and the hr can cc himself here so that he is also copied if it's approved or rejected okay and we will choose save okay just uh, let me also add my email address here i did not add my email address so let me add my email address okay it's safe mm, rejected email okay 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 fine Yeah, it's inactive. We are still not complete. Okay, so another for recall. So once it's recalled, uh, this is a uh, what you call. If the user maybe wants to have more days or maybe wants to reduce some number of days, then if you want, you can add another uh, what you call another update there, or you can send another email also. Okay, no problem. So if the initial submission stage here, we want to change the status to uh, pending. Okay, so we will add when when the approval is submitted, then the if the user comes and tries to see the particular record, if it's approved or not, he will get the message there, uh, the status as pending. Okay, so we can <coughs> go ahead and put it here and we'll choose field to update uh, employee description number of days status and we'll get one picklist value so we'll use the picklist value as pending and we'll just save okay now here you want to add some email you can also add an email saying that your approval uh, your uh, number of pto has been submitted for approval okay just to let him know that the approval process is started or it has been started in the system okay so pending is there so mm, this is also done this is also done and to recall if you want to no recall it's fine if you want to add some actions you can add it no problem okay now we have to make it active so we can just click on this activate and it will be done but before that let's take a look pictorially like visually what it looks like so for that sorry yeah yeah correct like uh, what is the flow uh, it's some plugin issue one second i think it's coming mm. ah. okay so this is what our approval process looks like okay so the entry criteria is there see if you click the mouse if the move if you move the mouse here it's showing that leave number of days is greater than three or equal to three okay so if it's yes then what is happening okay the record will be unlocked that's it okay and then the leave is okay this is for recall process okay started and then if it's recalled then only unlock is done nothing else 
okay if we submit it okay then you see one sorry yeah no Mm, no so let's say the hr has submitted for approval okay for six days for the pto it has submitted for six days approval okay and meanwhile the the person who's applied for leave he contacts the hr and wants to say uh, or sends an email saying that uh, i want to increase the number of days to seven okay in that case the record is locked right uh, so once it's submitted for approval the record is locked Okay, they will not be changed. So what they will do is they will recall that approval. They will recall. Correct. So they are pulling it back, and the uh, so approval will the, whoever is has to approve whoever it was submitted to they'll get a message saying that it has been recalled. Okay, so they'll not approve it or reject it. So they'll keep it on hold. So then they will go ahead and unlock the record. Record will be unlocked automatically, and then they will edit it, and change the number of days, and submit it again. okay so that is how the process works so once initial submitted is done the record will be logged and the update field will be pending the status will be pending okay so it is pending for approval okay so step 1 if it's rejected okay then in rejected you can add number of steps here as well okay in step 1 we are just adding one step here if you add step 2 step 2 will come okay so here end is leave recalled here leave is rejected so one is email alert one is field update field update is record on uh, one is record is unlocked and also field is updated to rejected okay and then if the final approval is done if it's approved then email alert is there and the field update is also happening field updates will be changing to approved okay and then the record will be locked okay so that nobody can change the number of days or any information okay only the person who is system administrator or who has submitted that approval they can go and edit it depending on the permission that we give while creating the approval okay okay so one thing i forgot to do is add when it is recalled we have another status in the uh, where is that here we have another status for recall also right so we did not add that recalled okay so i'll just quickly add that here so when the recall is done we will click uh, field update and we'll add the recalled uh field to update we'll choose as uh, status and we will add the value as recalled and we'll click save okay so initial submission is fixed okay step is fixed okay and then we are our final approval is fixed final rejection is fixed and the recall is also fixed okay now the only thing pending is to activate this okay so now i think we can if you refresh this where did it go now if you refresh this one more thing should be added here in the recall process can we refresh this i don't think we can let me see okay looks like it's being refreshed so field is also updated to the status as recalled okay so we'll just minimize this as of now and we will activate this approval process after activating this approval process you cannot add or remove the approval steps you cannot add actions after uh, approving i mean up, after activating it okay also some approval steps attribute will not be editable so continue okay so now our approval process is activated okay so now if you go ahead and if you just refresh here you can submit it for approval okay so let's go ahead and submit it for approval let's see what happens okay so the hr comes in and submits for approval so once you submit the record for approval you might not be able to edit because we have locked the account or we have locked the uh, leave 
So we'll click OK. And as we chose the option, the submitter has to choose which user should get the approval, like who should be submitted to. Correct. So we HR. Okay. Yeah. So correct, correct, correct. So the the person, the employee who is applying for a leave, he will either send an email to the HR or call or try to contact in some way, right? So all this ob this this object will be edited by the HR. Okay, so what actually should happen? We should have created one application for leaves, or we should have created one application for human resources. Okay, in that we can we can choose either uh, number of employees working, salaries, when should their, they get their salary, their PTO, all those things will come in that application. Okay, and we should give HR only access to that particular application. We should not give them access to the sales application or service application. Okay, so that's the whole idea. They, we, so the HR will have their own application in the same organization. So we will give them access to edit only these particular application objects or whatever is related to their work. Why should they be able to see opportunity leads? They don't have any job there, right? So that is how it's all organized. Okay. So we should have actually created one application for human resources. And in that we should have added uh, PTO leaves and uh, salary, salary slip resumes. All those things should be added there or everything which is related to the uh, human resource like interviews. OK, all those things. OK, so later we'll see we'll try to create an application for the human resources. OK, so to check it out. Okay, so now we have to choose one approver. So we can choose the approver either in the queue, we can send it to the queue directly, but in the queue, we don't have any users as of now. So we'll choose user and we can look up the user. So as of now, which has the email address? I am not sure which user has the email address. Mm, let's try this. Okay, so if you see the status here, it is pending. Okay, and if you see the status here, that update that we did, that is also pending. Okay, and if you see the record, the record is logged. So if anybody else apart from the HR or whoever has submitted the leave, if they come to the page, they'll not get this option to unlock the record. OK, they will not get the option to unlock the record. So only the person who is uh, submitted, they can get the option to unlock the record as of now. OK, so here they can go ahead and recall the approval as well. OK, so let's say if they want to uh, change the number of days. So we will recall the approval request. OK, so in this case, what is the comment that we are putting? Uh, increase or we'll put so let's say the users uh, or the employee sends an email to the HR saying that I want to add one more day. OK, so to put that in the record here, the, the HR will add a comment. OK, so requested to uh, make it or make a leave for seven days. OK, and they can recall. Okay, so as of now, see it's recalled. Okay, so in the approval history, you can see that it is recalled. Yeah, and even the status has changed to record. And whatever the email is connected to this particular user, that person will also get the email. So I'm not sure what is the email address here. Let's check it out. Hmm. Okay, I have my hotmail here. So let me just open that hotmail and see if we have got any email. Mm, where did that go? Okay. See, in the comment section, it is mentioned that request to uh, make leave for seven days. So now the, what the HR will do, they will go here and they will make it as seven. 
okay as the record is unlocked automatically so they'll get an option to uh, edit it now they can save it okay now the hr will submit it for uh, approval again okay so now if we submit for approval again the status will change to pen, uh, pending once again and the, it has to choose the user so here we will choose one user so as i have only one valid user in this uh, developer org so i'll choose that user and send to next approval okay so now status is pending and the record is logged and the overall status is also pending here okay so as i am the person who it is submitted to i am getting an option option to approve or reject okay because it's like i am submitting it for myself because i have only one valid user but in actual org this will not be the case okay only the system admins will have the access to like do everything apart from this thus the person who has to approve they will only get the approval or rejected option okay so let me just check out my emails mm, okay let's get back here okay so let's say i got the email uh, let me see where is that email Mm, very deal. This is different. This is the flow error. But where is that email coming? One second. maybe mm, did not come here mm. oh, so I think it's not here it's not here it will come eventually uh, i i think i added to my another email let me just check gmail Okay, what is this? ASM Technologies Gen what case? This is regarding the case that we have created. So this is different. Uh, correct, correct. So this was for, it was for that. Hmm. So as of now, it has not come, but it will come eventually. As I, as uh, we can see that the approval is working because we are getting the status change. Okay. Okay. So now they have uh, submitted it for approval once again, and the status is pending. Here also the status is pending. So now the person who has to approve, they'll get one reminder email, and they can go to this particular PTO. They can go to this record and they can approve or reject. So if they click on this approve or reject. Okay. So they can add their comments here and they can approve or reject. So rejected as 
too many days they can put their comment and they can reject it okay so now once it's rejected the uh, pto will again be unlocked okay it's automatically unlocked and the, it's red color it's showing that it's been rejected okay so status is also rejected and the email will be sent okay now once again they will go ahead and they will change it to number of days let's say five the hr will change it to five okay and they'll inform the user saying that seven days were not approved please uh, decrease the number of days so he will decrease it to number of five and they'll submit it for approval once again and we'll click OK. And then the user, which person has to receive the approval? So as we have only one user, I'll put my name here and send to the next approver. If we had a hierarchy of approvers, we would have got another approver to send it to. OK. So now I have got an option to either approve or reject. Or I can also reassign it to somebody. Let's say I'm not available in the office right now. I don't uh, want to make this decision. So whoever is available, I can reassign it to another person. Okay, and that person will get this approval or uh, rejection op option. Okay, so if you click reassign, you see the another user is already available. So from here, as of now, I have the only, I'm the only one user. So I'll not get. I mean, I will get, but it's like reassigning to same person. Okay. So instead of that, I'll go ahead and I'll approve it. So I can approve this. Okay. I can put, uh, write my comment as, let's say, enjoy your holidays. And I can approve this. okay once the reminder email is sent to the hr okay they will see that it's approved and they will go ahead and inform the user saying that your uh, what you call pto has been approved you can go ahead and take your leave okay see now this is coming so the has been discounted please approve the discount whatever the template that we'll choose depending on the template it will come yeah this is something else i think there thank you this when did this come mm, this also came now now only i think for different uh, uh, times we have chosen different template okay so that's why it's coming we go to here here also we should be able to get it okay so we are under inbox or maybe hotmail is too slow okay this will not come here it will not come here junk emails you already checked i don't think it's here okay anyways so the email would have come okay and i we got the email in the gmail okay so this is how the whole approval process is is done and this is a simple very simple example that we have chosen okay it could be much more complicated than this okay because if it's depending if the whole sales is depending on this the discount percentage the amount on number of items in that uh, like code to cash all this uh, code to cash process is there right and lots of companies you know, product based companies you know about code to cash okay okay no problem no problem so it's uh, in those kind of uh, product based companies if they're selling let's say some uh, security servers okay like uh, dns server or something like that, that they are manufacturing okay so on creation of the opportunity okay and on uh putting some discount percentage they have to submit it for approval okay and that particular opportunity depends on the region whether it's emia region or whether that's uh, apac region or whether it's a uh, europe region okay uh, middle east or if it's japan all those regions are there different different regions are there so depending on that region the approval will be sent to their region managers okay and 
and it will be like a bunch of managers like five six people will be there and all of them have to approve that particular discount percentage that quote they have to approve okay and if anybody rejects the quote they have to mention the reason why this quote is rejected and the whole opportunity they will have to send another quote okay so in such big big business processes okay approval process is used and all this is dependent on the uh, like salesforce okay so that is how big businesses are running and they are uh, using salesforce okay okay so this was all about the approval process so i would want you to create an approval process for the discount okay so what you can do is in the opportunity you will not have any field a custom field for discount so what i want you to do i want you to add one custom field for discount okay like this let me show you so add one custom field for discount percentage the data type should be percentage okay when you go to create one field okay when you go to create one field here you will get the different data types right so here i want you to choose as percentage okay so choose percentage and then create a field here okay and uh, before submitting for approval that percentage should be there okay and once submitted for approval it depends on the percentage if percentage is higher than let's say 30 percent then that approval process should start so the entry criteria that i want you to do is uh, object should be opportunity okay the entry criteria uh, this you can choose as uh, discount is greater than 30 percent okay any approval you can choose any approver you can choose on your own and add a cc to yourself as well so that you can get to know okay once that is done the result of the approval i want you to choose the action for approved if it's approved then you can ask the user or you can ask the sales rep to go ahead and make the deal okay and all those things and you can update the step or the update the stage of the opportunity okay update opportunity stage okay like you can move it to closed one or something okay you can move the stage to closed one and you can also send one reminder email add one reminder email there and if it is rejected in that case you have to send an email uh, saying that you have to update the quote or send another quote okay and in that case you change the stage to one step back maybe revision or change it to quote stage okay change op to quote stage okay and if they recall in that case you have to unlock the record okay unlock the record and uh, that's it okay unlock the record and send an uh, send reminder just send one reminder asking to submit it again by editing okay if it's in pending then you can also update the stage okay if it's approved you can make it to closed one if it's rejected you can move back one step okay and if it's pending then you can move it to pending stage like uh, some inquiry or some stage you can choose okay okay so this you can create and let me know if they, you are having any issues okay and then we can continue in the next class okay all right so as of now in the approval process do you have any questions for me okay which section ha 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 correct 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 okay 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 no problem okay okay so the first thing is the entry criteria okay here you choose uh, all the uh, formulas like when should this uh, approval process start 
okay and then all the other things that whom you should submit it to all those things you can choose it here you can choose a template here okay and who should be submitting it do you want to activate okay allow who should be able to recall it or not okay you can uh, do all those things here okay just to set up the approval process okay so once that is done you can give it and you can activate it okay it will work the approval process will work okay but it will not do any anything in the just in just the approval history in the approval history you will see that it's approved if it is rejected recall whatever is happening you can see that okay but no status will be updated okay and uh, no email will be sent okay so no that kind of, that kind of actions will not happen like locking the record unlocking the record that will not happen okay so because you are not creating any actions you are just creating one entry criteria that when should that approval process be activated that's it okay so because approval process has different stages like if if it's approved if it's rejected if it's recalled if it's pending so four stages are there four basic stages are there okay in initial submission you can reassign it to somebody else all those stages you can move it like uh, let me show you the diagram here okay so here like step one in rejection you have step one you can add step two also in step one you're sending the email alert that it is rejected step two what you can do is you can send it to somebody else also if even if they are reject then you have to you can send it to somebody else to for further approval you can add as many actions as you want in the rejection okay just like that you can also add uh, as many actions for approval also if one person is approving okay then you can send it to another person also like their manager if something is very critical then you can send it to even their manager you can create the whole flow like that okay so here the actions what is what what the action is doing is it determining when to do what okay so one is approved one is rejected and one is recalled okay and one is submitted so when it is submitted what we want to do we want to uh, lock the record okay and this is done default by default it will happen okay and you cannot change it because that is the whole idea about the approval process okay and then you can add some field update you can add some email like you can add three things outbound message as of now we will not see so field update and email alert you can add okay so this is just for submission if it's the if the approval is submitted then what will happen now let's say the person gets the approval and he uh, says that okay fine i want to approve this this is valid i want to approve this so when it's approved then what all actions you want to take place okay in that case you can uh, the, you can edit this either you want to lock the record or you can keep it unlocked that is fine you can send an email alert and you can update it okay this you can do and the same similarly you can also choose the action what you actually want to do when the uh, approval is rejected okay if you want to lock or if you want to do field update send an email and similarly also for recall action okay so for all the four steps you can do something so like recall or uh, result of approval if it's approved then do something if it's rejected then do something and uh, if it's recalled then do something if it's pending then do something else okay so like that Once, depending on these criteria the action will happen okay so that is what it's all about okay so in workflow you, you choose an object you choose an entry criteria and if it this is true then the action will happen but in approval policy it is not like that it's different okay so that's difference between workflow and the approval process okay okay you have any other questions yeah yeah hmm correct i'll i'll check it out. no problem okay i'll check and 